What's going on guys? John Alden here from CodyB.com and in this video, we're gonna build a calendar with PyQt5 and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna build this very quick calendar with PyQt5 and Python. But before we get started, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodyB.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, we're gonna build this very quick and simple calendar with PyQt5. Now, the PyQt5 designer has a calendar widget already, so we just have to drag and drop this thing, and then make a few little tweaks in the code to make it actually work. And it's actually really simple. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other PyQt5 videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. So I've got our basic PyQt5 starter code that we've always got. I'm calling this cal.py, short for calendar, because I'm too lazy to type calendar. <laughs> and uh, there's nothing in it so far. So let's head over to our terminal and I'm in my C PyQt5 directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on and let's just run the designer. So let's go designer. And when we do this thing pops up, we just want a main window. Let's go ahead and create that. And we could resize this if we want, whatever size, it doesn't really matter. So like I said, we're gonna use a calendar widget. So we just have to come down here and find it. And it's at the very bottom in the display widgets. You would think it would be up here with the time and date widgets, but nope, it's all the way down here at the bottom this calendar widget. So I'm just gonna pull this over and drop it in and boom, that's all there is to it. Now we can resize this to any old size we want, make it nice and big. All right, that looks just fine. Now like all widgets, you can right click on here and add a style sheet like this, and this will pop right up and you can make the style sheet changes like you would any other thing. I think I've talked about this a couple of times here and there in passing, but we haven't really talked about style sheets. Maybe I'll make a video on that in the future but it's basically like CSS you can type in here. In this case, it's Q Cal widget, something like that. And then you could type in your stuff. We're not gonna mess around with it, but you could if you wanted to. So, all right, now let's put a label on here just so that when we click on this calendar, we can do something. We actually show the date somewhere so that we know how to actually do that. So I'm just gonna grab a label, come down here and kind of pop this in. And we'll just take that off or we could type in Pick a date, something like that. Change the text if you want, no big deal. So for instance, we could click on this guy and make it bigger, I don't know, whatever. Uh, so that really that's all there is to it. So let's come up here and save this guy. So let's go file save as, and I wanna be in my C PyQt5 directory, and I'm gonna call this cal.ui because our Python file is cal.py, right? So if we head back over to our code, let's open that file real quick just to see what we have here. So cal.ui. And here it is. Now we're gonna need a few things out of here. So if we come down here, it's a calendar widget. Let's go ahead and import that up here at the top. I don't know that we really need to, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. We've also got a label, which is a Q label. So let's go ahead and import that at the top as well. And now let's define our widgets. Every time we have widgets, we need to define them here. We've done this lots of times. So I'm gonna call self dot, and I'm gonna call it just calendar, right? And let's find this. So self dot find child and then we just need to grab what it is so there that is and then the actual name of it in the ui file which is right here name equals calendar widget so i'll just copy that and there we go and we'll do the same thing for the label self we'll call it just label self.label equals self.find child and again just come through here find our label here it is so we can copy that it's a q label and we want to name it label because that's what it's named. Okay, so now let's come down here and create a function that will get called whenever we actually click on the calendar. So let's define, let's call it, I don't know, grab date, something like that. We wanna pass in self as always. So here, let's create a variable called, I don't know, date selected, something like that, and set that equal to self dot calendar dot selected date, right? Now this will return a very weird sort of object looking thing. And so we're gonna have to actually convert this to a string. But before we do that, let's just put this up on the screen. Uh, put date on label, whatever, just to see what it's returning. So let's go self.label.set text. And let's just pass in this date selected. So, okay, now we need to actually connect our calendar widget to this function, right? So let's connect the calendar to the function. 
And to do that, we just call self.calendar dot selection changed, right? So whenever you click on something on the calendar, the selection will have changed. So we call selection changed. And then we want to dot connect that to our self dot whatever we call this thing, grab date, and that should do the trick. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. So let's go Python cal dot pi. Uh oh, calendar. <laughs> I always misspell calendar. I can't remember if this is an A or an E and it just messes me up. So, okay, line 17, what did we do here? Yep, calendar, forgot the N. All right, that's a new one for me. I always misspell calendar, but I always put the N in there. <laughs> All right, so now we've got this thing. If we click here, remember, it's actually not putting anything on the screen because Q date, we need a string, a label won't take anything but a string. So, like I said, we have to change that. First, before we do that, though, let's just let me just kind of slap this in a string function just to see what it is. Let's head back over here, run this guy again. So now we click on one of these errors. Yeah, see, we get this weird high qt5 dot qt core dot q date. It looks like a I don't know what it looks like an object or something. Obviously, this is not that useful. We need to convert this. There's a couple of ways we can convert this. Really, just sort of whatever you prefer. Head back over to our code. So the first way to do this is to use two pi date. Now I'm not sure I like this method that much. So it's two pi date, and that's a function. Now we need to still actually wrap all of this in a string. Convert it to a string first, and then convert it to a two pi date. So let's save this and run it. See how this looks. Like I said, I'm not as happy with this method. And you'll see why when we click this, it just returns 2021 10 18, which to me is a weird kind of format. So it's 2021 October 18th, October 27th, October 25th, right? Okay, that's all right. But I kind of much prefer the more explicit way where it actually sort of uses English, I guess. So to do that, let me just comment this out. So that'll still be there. Instead of two Python date, we could just convert this to string like that. And I kind of prefer that a little bit. It's really just your own personal preference. So if we run this guy again, now when we click on something, it says Monday, October 18th, 2021. To me, that's more readable, it sort of makes more sense. But if you're doing something mathematical, and you need the actual numbers, you might use that two pi date thing, and then just parse them out using regular Python like you would. And um, either way, so it just really depends on what you need. Now we can click these buttons and go into the future, Wednesday, January 19th, 2022. And that's all there is to it. So that's the calendar widget, super easy to use and really not much to it. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.